Now in a family, that people hurt each other easily in the family. That's is a common problem. Why? Why does that happen? Because generally people have little love or no love for the for the spouse. They just like the spouse at the beginning. They like the wife being uh, beautiful or submissive at the beginning. But after a while, when the wife start to nag, then he doesn't like her anymore. Now, for a man, the love goes with the how much he likes the wife. If he doesn't like the wife, he doesn't love anymore. That happens to many men. For a woman, generally, the love is stronger, even though the husband is not so. So good. The wife still want to do nice things to take care of the husband. That generally happens. Uh, so generally, the wife has more love, and and the man, if the man appreciate that and and say to the woman, I really like how you take care of me. You really take good care of me, and I feel loved, and I like it. Then the wife would feel important. But very often. Most men don't talk like that. They don't say anything nice to the to the wife. the uh, The husband doesn't say, "Oh, you're so wonderful. You're so kind to me. You're so loving to me." That he thinks that she will understand that. But actually, woman likes, you know, the husband to tell her many times, "I love you. I like you. I appreciate you. I appreciate everything you do for me." And that is what I say to my wife many times a day. I would tell her many times a day to assure her that I love her, I like her, I appreciate her. She is important in my life, and I thank God for her. I thank God that God puts her in my life. That way, she feels comforted. She feels comfortable with me, and then she she loves me, and I appreciate that love. I don't want that love to change, and I don't want my love for her to change. And Once the relationship changes, it's hard to restore. Once a relationship gets worse, it's hard to restore. So we want to keep the love as strong as we can, and we have to put effort into it. And then, in many family, they have the habit of yelling at each other and criticize and nag. Now, because they learn from the parents, because many parents they don't know how to be good parents either. So when they are unhappy about something, they just yell and and and、uh, fight and criticize, and that becomes like a norm. So we understand that this is not the norm. This is this is the norm of the world. This is the norm, not the norm in the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, it should be full of love. And we don't find that in most families. We don't find that in most families that the husband will say to the wife, "You're so wonderful. I like you. I love you. I care about you.、Uh, I I want to make you happy." I don't see that at all.、Uh, hardly, hardly have I seen that. Once in a long while, I see that. And then、uh, prob- uh, another problem is that they don't communicate or listen. Now, listening is very difficult. Listening is hard to learn. Listening means that we try to understand the other person's feelings. When a person says, "I'm unhappy," very often the husband will say, "Don't be unhappy. You just pray, pray, and you'll be happy again." He's not listening. He's not listening to the reason. He just tell her what to do. Instead, he'll find out. He should find out why are you unhappy. Tell me why you're unhappy. Tell me why. And then, when she tells me, him, "Well, I have all this work to do, and you come home and you don't talk to me, and I feel very unhappy." And then the husband would say, "Well, you should talk to God. You should have a good relationship with God, and then you don't depend on me." Then, he's not responding to her needs. He's just giving her a. Solution that he thinks is the godly solution. You just pray to God, and God will comfort you. You don't need the comfort of a husband. You know, the Bible says, "Love your wife as Christ loves the church." So we want to listen and care about her. 
okay and then the fourth point don't appreciate they don't appreciate each other they take things take things for granted that that the other person has to do this thing is is required you have to do it instead we should say I really appreciate that you do this it's wonderful that you do this for me and neglect the other person it's neglect the other person's feelings neglect the other person's presence it's like the other person is invisible every day when my wife comes home on the way home she'll be driving and she'll call me on the way and we'll be talking all the way on the phone and then when she comes home I will open the door I welcome her I kiss her I hug her so every time we, I welcome her home and then when I come home she do, do the same thing that we see each other as important it's very important that you know if you don't want to see the other person as an important person then don't get married but many people get married not to love the other person they get married so that they can have sex they get married so that they can have a family and have children they don't get married to give love to have a loving family so that concept is not present in many people's heart so I hope that in a church that you teach the people that is very important that we learn to love listen if you don't want to listen don't want to love don't want to care don't want to appreciate don't get married but many people say I have to get married but I don't want to love then what happened is they you know that uh, then there will be a problem in the marriage and it could have divorce and then it would give the devil a foothold and then also in many families they get emotional they get angry or depressed easily they are, they are unhappy to see each other and they, f or they force people to change they, you have to do this you have to do that and then it becomes heavy responsibilities in the family it becomes heavy responsibility and then sometimes they want the other person to disappear so this is what happened in a family that hurts and I want to say this in a loving family the husband loves the wife appreciate the wife the wife loves the husband and respect the husband and they're kind to each other they communicate with each other then they have the, the motivation to care for each other to love each other and this is the same with our relationship with God if our relationship with God is a relationship of love then I'll say God you're so kind to me that we count all the blessings of God God you're so kind to me you have provided salvation for me you send the Holy Spirit to work in my heart even though when I even when I disobey you you still continue to move in my heart to follow you and you're always gentle you always draw me to come to you and you always give me joy and peace when I come to you God you're so wonderful so wonderful I appreciate you I love you and I want to glorify you I want to serve you now that would be a good relationship with God but many people's relationship with God is just like a bad marriage because many people grow up under the law it's always responsibilities it's always when they were young they have to take care of the family to, uh, you know do the chores at home and after they get married they have to take care of uh, the things in the home and then they have to listen to the wife or husband and care about each other and then they start to think this is too much work too much work too much work and then they get frustrated and then the family relationship become like a burden that's the same for many Christians when they don't have love for God and they don't see the love of God when they don't come to God and say God you're so wonderful they don't praise God they don't worship God they don't appreciate God what happened is then the heart is filled with just responsibilities I have to go to church I have to worship I have to read the Bible I have to pray it's so much responsibility and in the world is freer I can do anything in the world but when I follow God I cannot sin I have to do all these things and people start not to like it and then it becomes a 
a heavy responsibility. The Christian relationship between become a heavy responsibility. But if we understand how loving God is, God, you're so good, you're so kind, you have always been nice to us, you're always kind to us. When we come to you, you always give us peace and joy and love, and you always help us. When we see how good God is, and then we always love God and respond to God with love, and then we enjoy God, then the relationship with God will be more enjoyable, and then we enjoy serving God. And that is what my, my teaching yesterday. The relationship with God as explained in the Bible should be a relationship of love because God is full of love toward us. And God cares about us all the time. God blesses us all in all the different ways, in every single way that we need, God is blessing us. God is so wonderful. So we should all appreciate God and say, God, you're so wonderful, and I enjoy you, and I enjoy your relationship. Then we'll be motivated to love God, motivated to serve God. Then the relationship with God will be stronger and stronger. But when people just want to get something from God, they just want salvation, they just want... Uh, when I need money, God give me money, give me what I want. They just want to get something from God. And then they, they always think of reading the Bible, praying, and evangelism as responsibility, heavy responsibilities. Then they lose interest. Then it becomes like a bad marriage. And they don't have strength from that relationship with God. And they lose interest, and some Christians even fall away from God. So it's the same way. So I hope that we all say, God, you're so wonderful. I appreciate you. And count all the blessings of God. And then for the marriage also, we count all the good things the spouse has done for us. When we also do good things to the spouse, when we treat the spouse nicely, we love her, care about her, listen to her, uh, comfort her, appreciate her, and she feels loved. And then she'll respond with love. Of course, a good marriage has to be between two persons who, who know how to love. So before marriage, people should learn to grow in love first. That is why if people have emotional problems, strong emotional problems, they should not get married until they get healed. They need to be healed before they get married. If a person has strong emotional problem, he has strong hatred, he has many hearts that are not healed, and then he just wants to get married to get healed, what happens is he finds that the husband cannot comfort her, and then she will get frustrated, and she will get angry with him, and then the, both sides, they will criticize each other, attack each other, and then the relationship will become worse and worse, and then it becomes very painful. So before any marriage, the pastor should counsel uh, the couple who wants to be married to actually in the early stage of dating, to find out whether they are chosen by God to be together, whether they are suitable for each other, whether they are healed of their hearts, whether they are emotionally uh, mature, and mature in every way as a person before they should get married. But many people are not mature. They are childish. They are selfish. And then they get married. And then it creates all kinds of problems. So we should think of the family as a commitment of responsibility. And when we love each other, and both sides love each other, and care for each other, and build each other, then the relationship can be very strengthening then we can enjoy the relationship and be strengthened in the relationship and then that relationship will be enjoyable. Now some people, when they hear me up to this point, they will say, well, then I made a wrong choice at the beginning. Well, I, my spouse is not a good spouse. I chose the wrong person. He or she is so emotional, no love. Uh, it, it's a wrong choice. That's why the marriage is not going to get better. Now, if you already married, then we need to cure the marriage. We need to put love. We need to put to uh, use counseling to help cure the relationship. 
to forgive each other. That is the only choice because God said that. What God put together, let, let no man put asunder. No, let no man divorce, but let all build up the marriage. So if you find there is problem with the marriage, then we start with forgiving each other and, and uh, apologizing and really be sorry for what we have done wrong and then have marriage counseling. It's good to have counselor. The pastor have learned how to do counseling would teach both of them how to um, it's actually counseling is not just teaching it's guiding them to understand now let me tell you the difference between teaching and counseling teaching is like this when someone this person is ready to learn and then I can teach right now I'm teaching I'm teaching now I'm just teaching you telling you how marriage should be counseling is okay when this person or this couple they are not ready to grow yet they have problems they are at a problematic stage and I want to help them and the way to help them is not just to tell them forgive each other and love each other they cannot do it because they they're in a terrible situation so I need to understand where they are and I would need to guide them step by step to go up they need to go up step by step slowly gradually to build up the marriage again to change step by step now for each one of us too when we have problems in our life we need to change step by step many people have negative feelings have anger frustration hatred unforgiveness we need to guide ourselves to change step by step to change our personality to change the uh, the habits the bad habits we have so when we do counseling, we need to understand where they are, we guide them, and then we give them hope and say, if you both work on it, it will become better. Are you willing to work on it? And, and uh, now it, there are many steps of counseling. I'm not going to talk about that. It's, it's complicated. We'll talk about that later. It takes time, and it's not just teaching. It's not just telling them, okay, love each other, forgive each other, apologize, and then go home, and then you're, you're, you're all well. That's not, it, it's not going to work because they have too much bitterness. And we need to talk out the bitterness, help them to talk out the, business, the bitterness so that they can uh, admit the faults that cause the other person to be bitter. They need to talk to each other and tell each other how they are sorry, that they have to take responsibility for what they've done wrong and then ask the other person to to forgive and then be willing to change and then how to change step by step how to change so it's it's not an easy process but many people haven't learned that and that's why Satan had a foothold in the marriage of many people okay also in the family one of the reasons of the problem because people follow the sinful nature easily they react to people the way they treat us the sets the, of many people that that's the habit. When people yell at us, we yell back at them. That's, that is the worldly way. But for me, my training is, when the person yells at me, that is his problem. That I belong to God, my life is precious. If I yell back at him or her, then it's my sin also. So even if he has problem, that is his problem. I will listen to him or her and I respond to him or her and I would try to resolve the problem for her and then uh, instead of yelling at her and it depends you know there are different situations how to handle it but first I don't take it personally that I will uh, not get hurt because I believe that nobody can hurt me because God protects me so even when people yell at me, I don't have to get hurt. So that's my belief. I don't have to be hurt by people. That I'm protected by God. I'm precious. And therefore, I have this strong self-image. The healthy self-image. I'm important. I'm precious. Even when people yell at me, it doesn't make me unimportant. I don't have to take the negative words of people. So people need to learn this in order to be able not to react negatively 
But many people don't have this motivation. They say, well, the other person is yelling at me. How can I control my temper? Let me tell you, it's not controlling the temper. It's managing our emotions to say, it's not going to change anything if I get angry. It's not going to benefit anyone. And then I will give de the devil a foothold. Then the devil can attack me. And I treasure my life. I want my life to go higher and higher. Therefore, I treasure my life. I would uh, listen to this person. I would analyze why he's angry. Now, if I've done anything wrong, I'll admit it. And I'll say, I'm sorry I did that thing wrong. I'm sorry. And if I didn't do anything wrong, I will find out why the person is angry. And then I won't accuse him or her. I will listen to him or her and then try to guide him to or her to find a way to resolve his problem. So that takes maturity. But many couples are not mature, so they react negatively. And they just want to get what we want to get. And most people just want to get, I want to get comfort, I want, to, I want you to listen to me, I want this, I want that. They just want to get something from the other person. And they're self-centered and they don't think the feelings and needs of the other person and they follow the internal impulses <clears throat> because our internal impulses are generally by our anger our frustration our selfish desire instead of the uh, the move of the holy spirit people you know naturally follow the sinful nature it's only that we submit ourselves to God that we choose to obey God that we will submit to the Holy Spirit submission to the Holy Spirit is not automatic generally the automatic response of people are anger frustration yelling and we want to build up this response in a heart to say it's not necessary to be angry I can listen to their person I can try to understand I can comfort I can care about the person and then we can build up better communication try to resolve the problem and uh, I know that when you hear this you say wow this is too difficult many people say this is too difficult it's it's too hard because it's not natural for many people to say it's not natural. Uh, for many people, the natural response is anger and frustration and yelling. They just haven't learned to, to manage their emotions. They haven't learned to, to take care of their impulses. They let the natural impulse take over their life. And that's why many people, they go home. It's, you know, they just let the old nature the old nature take over instead of letting the their new nature take over okay so that's what happened in many families and that's why many Christians have problems in the Christian life and so my teaching I um, I would train people to take care of the emotions not to be affected by people uh, to think for the other person, to understand the other person, try to understand the other person and respond to the person, to guide the other person to understand the needs and the problem so that uh, we can help the other person. So that is uh, my teaching, but many people don't have that. They just follow the natural impulse. Okay, in many marriages that there is no love, no communication, and then they criticize and nag and yell and get disgusted and avoid each other. Uh, they avoid the responsibility and then they have extramarital affair and then divorce. So that happened to many <coughs> marriages. And from parents and children problems, sometimes the children are affected by the world and then there is no communication between the parents and the children because many people just communicate like this. Do this, do that, don't do that. You are too, you are too bad. 
you, you, you are not obedient. You are a bad child. So people communicate only by criticism, with criticism and, and negative communication. And so when they communicate with the wife or with the children like that, then the wife and the children don't like it. And then there is no communication. And they yell at each other. And then there's mutual enmity. And the children become rebellious. And the children become problematic. And then there will be problematic relationship. So that happened in the marriage and in the, in the family with the children. And then financial problem. Uh, that their problematic relationship, then uh, they, have, they don't have good motivation to work and then they don't have a good job and they have financial problem and they have children problem, emotional problem and no strength and spiritual problem and then people can break down. So that happens to many people that they, the whole life is broken down. Okay, now God wants to heal our lives. God wants to bring healing that uh, heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to comfort all who mourn. God wants to heal the family. How to bring healing to the family? Okay, Only love can heal a relationship. So we first make the commitment and say, I want to commit to love. I want to commit to, to care for my family members. <clears throat> um, so in a relationship do we do things that make the other person feel happy when I see my wife very often I will, mas I will ma massage her uh, I, sometimes it's a l lengthy one sometimes it's a short one just to make her feel good when we're waiting for the bus I might be massaging her on the back just to let her know that I care about her. It's, it's um, a way of saying that I love her, I care about her. Now, for some people, it's just telling the other person, you have to do this, you have to do that. Then it's just, uh, it's just gifting, giving responsibility to each other. We should all take up responsibility by ourselves. Take up responsibilities willingly. So love, if we are not willing to love, the marriage cannot be healed. We need to learn to, to love. And be willing to admit our faults and say sorry. So James 5.16 says, Confess your trespasses to, to one another. To say sorry. Sorry, I've done something wrong. Sorry, I have not listened to you. Mm -hmm.